In the last video, we developed the roots of our differential equation for the solution, and we came up with a quadratic formula that uh, we solved, and that's the formula there, r equals negative b over 2m plus or minus the square root of b squared divided by 4m squared minus k of the spring divided by m. There are three different possibilities that we have based on this determinant of the quadratic equation. Let's take a look at the first. We call it underdamped. And that's when b squared over 4m squared minus ks over m is less than 0. When this is the case, then the square root is going to be negative, which means we're going to have imaginary roots. And we dealt with this in quadratic, or I mean in the differential equations, when we dealt with quadratic formulas. We didn't deal with it as to the specifics, we basically just solved it. Now we're looking at the specifics. Why does a quadratic equation with this determinant cause to have a uh, cosine function? Or That's what we're going to find out here based on what we did before. So we'll take and make a function or a, or a parameter called gamma, and we'll make that the first part, negative b over 2m. And then we're going to make what we call omega prime. It's not the square root, it's just uh, something close to omega. And since omega was positive, the way we can do that is to swap out or swap the terms. So it's k of the spring divided by m minus b squared over 4m squared. This will make the determinant or the square root positive. And our formula for the solution will be x function of t equals a e to the negative gamma t cosine omega prime times t plus phi. Now as a special case, what happens if b is equal to 0? Well, if b is equal to 0, then we have a special case called undamped. And in that case, it's just a straight cosine. Notice that your e to the negative gamma t would go to 1, and we just have a cosine. And look what happens inside of the square root. The second term goes to 0, and so we have our standard definition for a non-damped system. It gives us the value of omega that we would expect. So that's a good sign. Let's look at what happens as we change values. Here we have b equal to 0, so we have this oscillating system, an undamped system. Let's start to increase our b value. Now you notice that it's starting to decrease in amplitude as time goes on. The more we decrease or increase our b value, the faster it decays and goes away. Now, if I put a large value in here, let's say 2.5, you notice that it passes 
the y equals zero, or the I'm sorry, the the x equals zero, and kind of just oscillates, but it's very close to just dying out very quickly, and that's because the b value is is pretty high. Our second case is called critical damped. And in this case, our, uh, our determinant b squared over 4m squared minus k of the spring over m is equal to 0. And here we're going to have a double root. And in this case, our formula is going to look something in the form x function of t is equal to c1 e of negative gamma t plus c2 e, I'm sorry, should put C to T E to the negative gamma T. Now, while this undamped rings back and forth, critically damped reaches and stays at zero. the quickest. Okay. That's what critically damp tells us. It gets to zero the fastest of all the different functions. When I say fastest and stays at zero, I'm, I'm meaning that with the under damped, it passed the zero line, came back up, past the zero line again, but it's still going towards the zero, but it's just bouncing back and forth. So even this is close, you notice that it passes zero and then comes back up and then it just barely passes zero, but it's taking a while to get to staying at zero. If I want to critically damp this system, put a 4 in, and notice that it doesn't cross the line, and it's to zero the fastest. So that's critically damped. And then we have overdamped. And that's when the determinant is greater than zero. And that just means that we'll have gamma one is equal to negative b over two m plus square root of b squared over 4m squared minus k of the spring over m and gamma 2 is going to be negative b over 2m plus I'm sorry minus square root of b squared over 4m squared minus k 
k of the spring over m. And our solution is going to be x function of t is equal to some constant c1 e to the negative gamma 1 t plus c2 e to the negative gamma 2 t. Now it turns out that both of these will have to be uh, made or will be a negative number or I'm sorry positive number which will then get us this negative exponential which is what we have to be. This is guaranteed by the fact that this determinant's greater than zero. So this gives us the three different possibilities and let's see what the overdamped looks like. Notice how the function comes down fairly quickly. Now let me move this B constant up quite a bit. Let's take it to 10. When I press enter, watch how this line moves, this graph line. See how it moves to the right and now it's taking a lot longer to get to zero. Move it back here so that you can see. There's critically damped. There's over damped. So how would we relate this to real life? Well, think about your car. You have shocks that act like springs. So as you drive your car and over the years those shocks become loose and when you hit a bump it kinda like bounces you up and down well that's like a car with bad shocks and now you take your car in to have new shocks put on and you're driving down the road and you hit a bump and it about knocks your teeth out because it's really really rough then that means that your new shocks are not adjusted right or I should say correctly and so if your new shocks aren't adjusted correctly you need to take it back to the dealer or whoever put the shocks on and you need to tell them I need my shocks critically damped because this gives you the smoothest ride. When your shocks are critically damped you will never feel the bump on the road if, if they're good shocks and they're set correctly you shouldn't be feeling the bumps in the road because the, the critical damp shocks will get rid of that as quickly as possible. So this is one way that you can determine under damped, critical damped, and over damped. The one thing that you would never want is undamped because then your car would completely continuously bounce up and down no matter what you did.